We've been talking about Mendelian genetics and the fact that dominant traits show over recessive traits. However, many of the things and the traits within our body do not show complete dominance or recessiveness. So we've been talking dominant versus recessive. Today we're going to discuss a couple of other options of inheritance patterns that we can have in our traits. Codominance, incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, sex-linked traits, and polygenic traits. So we're going to take a look at all these other different inheritance patterns and how they would affect or be shown in the phenotypic ratio or the phenotypic um, expression of these traits. So let's look here first. Dominant versus recessive is what we've been talking about. We have one allele that is completely dominant over a second allele. So if we have red and white, red is completely dominant over white. We use the uppercase letter for red, lowercase letter for white. Then we take a look at the genotypes and phenotypes. We can have a homozygous dominant genotype, a heterozygous, or a homozygous recessive genotype. Okay? Heterozygous is the key one that we're going to look at at these, in, in these three different inheritance patterns. If we have two red alleles, you're going to have a red phenotype. If you have two white alleles, you're going to have a white phenotype. In the dominance inheritance pattern, if you have a heterozygous, you're going to show the dominant trait, so you're going to show red. Okay. Our second inheritance pattern, however, is called codominance. Now, codominance is where in the heterozygous genotype, you're going to see both traits in the phenotype. So, one way that it's represented is actually by using an uppercase letter. They're both dominant. They are codominant. They're both dominant. So we're going to use an uppercase H here, just pretend it's hair color. We're going to use an uppercase H here to represent the gene and then the allele is represented with a superscript letter. So I've used a superscript R to represent red and a superscript W to represent white. So in our genotypes, we can have two red alleles and get a red phenotype. We can have a red, um, let's do the two white alleles next, and you can have a white phenotype, or you can have a red and a white allele, and in that case, you're actually going to see both red and white. Okay, So this is where you would see some hairs that are red, some hairs that are white, and it would appear to be that red and white kind of mix. Okay, So codominance you see both. The last one we're going to look at is incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance is where neither one is fully dominant over the other. So with this type of dominance and inheritance pattern. In the heterozygous genotype, the phenotype is actually going to be halfway between the two traits. Okay, the two shown traits. So for this, again, you're going to use that H for hair color with a superscript of either R or W or whatever it is. So if we're using red and white, if we have two red alleles, it's going to appear red. If we have two white alleles, it's going to appear white. And if we have a red allele and a white allele, it's going to appear halfway between red and white, so we're going to see it appear as pink in color. Okay. The next pattern of inheritance that we're going to look at is called multiple alleles. Everything we've looked at so far, there are only two alleles for something. You have, it's either this or it's this. Okay. With multiple alleles, there could be three, four, five, even more alleles than that. So different forms that you can have. Each person still only carries two different of, of those alleles or two of those alleles. They could be the same, they could be different. Okay. Each person still only carries two of those alleles, but this is where you get lots of different mixes within um, the population. So for our blood type, our blood type is actually a multiple allele uh, trait. We have, we have an allele for type A blood, we have an allele for type B blood, and an allele for type O blood. Type A and B are both dominant, they are co-dominant, 
over type O blood. So type O is recessive. The allele is recessive. So our genotypes that we could get, we could have one of three different homozygous genotypes. Two alleles for A type blood is going to give us A type blood. Two alleles for B type blood is going to give us B blood. And two alleles for O type blood is going to give us type O blood. However, when we start looking at the combinations or the heterozygous forms, this is where we get multiple different combinations. So if we have an A and a B allele, we'll actually get type AB blood because they are co-dominant. You're going to see both. If we have an A allele and an O allele, you're going to see type A blood. And if we have a B allele and an O allele, you're going to see type B blood because A and B are both dominant over type O blood. All right, another type of inheritance pattern are sex-linked traits. Now these sex-linked traits are genes that are located on the chromosomes that help determine whether or not you are male or female. So they determine your sex or your gender. We know that females carry the genes XX and males carry, the, or the chromosomes I should say. Females carry the chromosomes XX and males carry the chromosomes XY. The sex-linked trait of colorblindness is actually a recessive trait that is carried on the X chromosome. If we have a recessive trait carried on the X chromosome, unfortunately guys, you guys are more likely to get this trait than females are. So males are actually more likely to have colorblindness than females are. With this, we have our X big B dominant is going to be normal color, a normal, um, you can see normal colors. X little b is going to be colorblind gene. And then I always write for my sex linked traits the Y chromosome down here. Because many times you forget and you say, oh, for a colorblind male, he's going to have the genotype X little b, X little b. But no, that would be a colorblind female. For a colorblind male, it would be X little b, Y. So many times you forget to put that Y chromosome in there. So I always use that in my data table also for my, um, for my uh, alleles. So females, we have three different combinations of alleles that you can get. So three different genotypes. Females could be X big B, X big B. We could be X big B, X little B, or X little B, X little B. And the only way for a female to be colorblind is if she inherits both an X little B from mom and an X little B from dad. So dad has to be colorblind and mom also has to either be colorblind or be carrying the colorblind gene. On the other hand, males, unfortunately, this is why you're more likely to get this disease or, or whatever you want to call it, why you're more likely to get colorblindness. Because X big B Y, you would inherit your X chromosome from mom and your Y from dad. So if mom has the X big B allele, you're not colorblind. If she is colorblind, you're going to be colorblind. Or if she's carrying the colorblindness gene, you could get the colorblindness gene, so X little b, Y. So males have a 1 out of 2 chance, and females only have a 1 out of 3 chance. So on sex-linked traits, they are on the X chromosome, and many times they're recessive. Okay? If they're dominant, females are more likely to get it. And if it's on the Y chromosome, then only males can get that trait. Alright, so sex linked traits are on the X or the Y chromosome. The final piece we're going to look at is something called a polygenic trait. Now, everything we've been looking at means that we only have one gene that controls whatever it is that, that we have for a trait. But there are lots of things within our body that are controlled by more than one gene. For instance, our hair color is controlled by at least four different genes within our body. Our eye color is controlled by at least four different genes. This is why people with brown eyes, all the brown eyes are not exactly the same. All the green eyes are not exactly the same. Because you can get the gene for a specific color, but then you get different genes, meaning for highlights and tones and things like that that you get within the coloring. Another one is for skin color. There are four or more genes also that control skin color. And this is why every person does not have the same tone of skin along with um, the same color. So every person who is Caucasian does not have the exact same color of white skin.
okay? We all have different colors and different tones of skin, and that's because we have different um, genes that control that. So we've talked dominant and recessive, co-dominance and incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, sex length traits, and finally polygenic traits. All of these inheritance patterns are things that you need to be able to determine on a question.